Hello everybody, this is Rob Redman of 3D World and welcome to this Q&A video. Uh, in this video we're just going to look at um, some of the problems that you might find when you're using lathe nerves. And I think a good example of this is a cup or a glass, uh, as that's a, a common tool for making something like that. So let's jump into the front view and I'm just going to navigate my scene just so I can find this floor plane here, bring that down to the bottom. And I'm going to use a linear spline to start with and let's just pop a point in the middle so this will be the base and the center of our glass so I'm going to pop that one there and I'll add an extra point just here and I'm just plotting out just a rough shape make a stem I'm just going to zoom back a little bit and now I'll make the, the main kind of bowl of the glass like so and I'm just going to add one more point just towards the top there Okay, now what I'm going to do is just add some thickness to this so that I don't need to go and then do an extrusion after I've done the lathe. So I'm just following back around the path of what I already had. Um, and this makes it easier to add a kind of a thicker section of glass towards the bottom. And that uh, that can help when you're trying to do ref reflections and refractions and things like that. It makes it just a little bit more realistic to have some more width to the glass. So we've got this profile done now. I'm going to hit the space bar just to drop that tool. And you can see as we lay this around, this is the kind of shape we're going to get. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key, and I'm just going to click on the, the Hypernerbs icon there until the drop down pops out. And I'm going to choose Lathe Nerbs, and holding down the Alt or Option key makes that spline a child with the Lathe Nerbs and automatically does that for us. So at the moment, you can see we've got this glass shape here. It's looking a little bit rough and ready, and I'd like to smooth these corners off. Um, so I'm going to jump back into my front view, select my spline, and using my live selection tool, I'm just going to grab some of these points here. In fact, I'm going to grab all of the points apart from the, the start and the end point. And what I'm going to do is, let's just zoom into a bit so we can see what we're doing more clearly. I'm just going to right click and go down to chamfer, and click and drag to the right in your viewport. Now this might not give you enough room to really properly smooth these out. Um, so I'm just going to go to the radius field over here in the attributes manager and click on the arrows and drag upwards until this is smoothed the amount I want. And I'm gonna to go to about there. Uh, you choose whatever shape you feel suits your glass best. But you can now see that this is much more attractive, looks a bit smoother. Um, so I've got more of a goblet than a, than a glass here. Um, but that's fine. Now. What we're going to find is that we've got this problem here in the middle which is all a bit of a mess and the reason for this is because our final point isn't quite lined up on the x-axis so even if we come in here and zoom right in you can see it's not quite right there and you can try and line it up by eye but if you look in the uh, coordinates manager here on the x-axis which is what we're looking for this is still not quite right and the, even if you're trying to do it by eye, you'll, it's very difficult to get it to exactly naught. So if I just select that field there, put in zero, uh, and it'll go back to our 3D viewport, you can now see that that's a, a perfect match and we don't have that kind of confusion of polygons, um, which sometimes might not be a problem, but if you're going to render this with a glass material, it will kind of uh, destroy the illusion of all the caustics and the internal reflections and all that sort of thing going on um, uh, when it can look very ugly so let's do the same thing over here for this point here let's just type in zero and here we go nice flat polygons across the base of that object and it really is as simple as that now let's just take this object and move it over to the side for a minute and look at the snapping options because this is a great fix if you've modeled your spline and you have it all prepared um, and then you realize that everything's not on the X and you can go in one by one. Uh, this is a very simple shape, but if you had a more complex shape with more points that need to be lined up on the on the axis there, uh, it can be a bit time consuming. Um, so another way of doing this is to come over here to this. Uh, this is kind of a, like a, looks like an old magnet icon. Um, or you can press the key, the P key to bring up the same options. Um, but just enable snapping and let's click and hold again to see what snapping we've got we've got 2.5D turned on and construction plane uh, and grid snapping and it's the, the grid line snapping here 
and 2.5D that we really want. Or you could do it with 2D as well, that would work just as well. So I'm going to go back into my view. Let's just see what we've got going on here. So I'm going to just line this up roughly. And I'm going to go back into my spline tools. I'll use a linear spline again. And you'll see as you move the cursor around, because we've got the grid line snapping, when you get close to one of the grid lines, it will automatically snap and it will do it on all the axis. Um, so here I'm going to drop my first point and you can see that everything is automatically at naught. So I can come over here, grab another one, uh, go about halfway there and let's do a similar kind of a shape. I might do it slightly different but that's okay. Um, in fact I'm going to add a few more points to this just to show how easily it works. And, and we'll make this glass slightly bigger and different shape. It's just just for a laugh, like so. Now, let's just add our thickness that we want here. You can still come in and grab the handles, which gives you a, a, a more control over the, the positions here, but it will still snap to the grid as you get closer, but it does mean you can add a, a thinner wall to the glass here. Um, so you can drop the point, and you can see it's snapping in not quite the right place that I want there. So I can come in, and I can grab these axis handles like so and uh, another thing to bear in mind you might have just seen that there is when you get to a certain zoom level the grid will kind of reduce itself so you get finer subdivisions on the grid as well um, which can be useful because then you can come in and you can snap to these individual points on the grid as well um, so I'm just going to follow that along and add a little bit of thickness here and then I'll come up same again as I did before snap to this point here which is on our y-axis so we know that it's going to be zero in the x and I can check that down here in the coordinates manager that's all looking good so hit spacebar drop the tool hold down alter option click on the NURBS icon there and choose laid NURBS and that makes it a child I'm going to go back into this spline again actually and just curve this out somewhat so I'm just going to select a few of these points let's go for these ones Hold down shift and I'm going to select those top ones as well. Make sure you've got live selection on those ones. Go for that one and I'll go for these two on the bottom here. Right click, and um, you can't see it in the video, but I'm just going down to chamfer again and just drag across to activate the tool. And I'm just going to yeah, just curve these out as much as I can there. Spacebar to drop that, and then if I go into my 3D viewport, we don't have this mess. So that's just two ways of looking at the same kind of problem. Um, one is the kind of rapid fix if you've already made it and plotted out your, your points and made your spline profile and everything. Uh, and the second way is how to avoid that in the first place. So that's just a, a good tip. Um, and when you're working with, and you know you're going to be working with a lathe um, or various other uh, projects you might be working on, different tools, then turning on snapping is probably a good thing to do. Now it's not always beneficial to use snapping um, and if you're doing something slightly more organic and freeform then I recommend turning it off um, because all that snapping around can become a, a more of a chore than it really needs to be but for this kind of a project perfect it's just the tool you want. Okay so I hope that's been of some use to you and uh, see you all again in a future video.